Although it rarely happens and is not something that I necessarily strive to achieve, it is cool to get a compliment on a watch that you're wearing that can maybe lead to an engaging conversation. And in that theme, we are going to be looking at 16 watches in this video that are great for starting a conversation. Just some criteria, what I wanna focus on here are watch designs that pique people's interest if you wear them. What I don't want is for these to be a list of hyped watches that are more conventional in their approach and only are grabbing attention because they have some reputation of being expensive or hard to get. How a watch can qualify for this list and grabbing someone's attention could be by their case shape, uh, the colors that they use, or even a unique way of tracking and telling the time. We're going to be looking at 16 watches again at a variety of different price points because you don't need to spend a lot of money to get someone's attention with a watch. And just as a huge announcement, the Zulu Time 39 is fast approaching. This is a watch that I think will be one of the releases of 2023 and long awaited ever since the release of the original 42 millimeter Zulu Time from last year. Now you're getting wearable dimensions, a variety of different dial colors to choose from, true GMT movement on the inside and should be available very soon for purchase. If you wanna stay notified, sign up in the description down below on the product page on teddybaldesser.com. We'll let you know as soon as we get them in stock. Stock. We're going to get a smaller batch to start. So if you want to be one of the first to get one of these watches, make sure you stay informed, sign up on the product page and we'll keep you informed when they come in. And Longines in terms of what they've done with these watches, I think is phenomenal. And in addition to that, a history in GMT watches, dual time zone watches that is long established. They had a watch back in 1908. It was a pocket watch that had two different scales for 12 hour time. And in 1925, they came out with the Zulu time. That was the first wristwatch with two time zones featured on the dial. A lot of history, amazing new release, and one I'm very excited about. And if you're excited too, definitely stay informed. Check it out in the description down below to get notified. For our first watch, we have the Seiko 5 Rowing Blazers. Now this is a watch that in terms of its case silhouette and its approach, very conventional. This is a collaboration between Rowing Blazers, they're a retailer in the United States and a brand with Seiko. This is their third collaboration that they've done. They started doing them in 2021. This third collaboration comes in that dress KX format. You have a white rainbow dial, probably the most striking of any of them, a purple dial, yellow, and then pink. They were limited. I think they're going to be sold out by the time of releasing this video, but probably something to keep on the lookout for the future. You are paying a bit of a premium, but in terms of gathering attention and being playful in their pops of color, some of the best in the sub $500 tier of any just co-branded release from Seiko. Next, we have a digital watch. And this is a piece that I have covered a bit more as of late. And the feedback in the comments has been pretty remarkable because people seem to be like, all right, what is this watch? I've never really seen this before. This is the Bull of a Computron. So this is a watch based on a 1970s digital watch release from the brand. And what makes it unique, apart from its retro, but also futuristic looks, it's a watch that has an L LED on the inside of the wrist. So if you're in the room looking at this on somebody's wrist, you just see this metal bracelet looking thing and you don't know it's even a watch until you maybe see them roll their wrist or you can get up close and see them put it you know, by their side where you can see that discreet looking LED. You also press the button to display the time. Pretty funky, but also cool. Next, we have a watch that grabs attention through its case silhouette. This is the Hamilton Ventura. This model is known for a variety of different reasons. One is going to be its unique case. Also back in the day, this was a movement that was being used in these watches that had electricity inside of it. It didn't really work out. The QC was not there. Now shifting over to quartz movements for up reliability. This also was the watch made famous by Elvis. He wore it in a movie called Blue Hawaii and also famously liked the watches themselves and also was worn in the Men in Black series, was kind of their official watch. So a lot of uh, acclaim in many different areas, but the case silhouette is eye-catching. It will get someone's attention from across the room, but in a way that is still done tastefully. This is my favorite configuration. I think this is the more plain Ventura quartz version, simple black dial, pretty wearable in its case despite the length of it. And an architecture unlike pretty much anything else in the industry. Speaking of a case that is unlike pretty much anything else in the industry, here we have the Rado Diastar. So this model family has its origins back to 1962. And at the time it was really the scratch resistant watch. It had a sapphire crystal, which is unlike pretty much any other watch in the period. But then in addition to that, 
also had a hardened case that would also resist scratches. Here you're getting a 38 millimeter diameter case with a lug to lug of 45 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters. But what you're getting here is that metal shroud that surrounds the central dial is going to be made of ceramos. This is an alloy of ceramic and metal being produced by Rado. Rado is known for their use of ceramic material. They're probably the best value when it comes to ceramic made watches. But really what makes this special outside of the material is what it is bringing to the table in the arena of scratch resistance. For the hardness of this material, you're looking at 1,750 Vickers. For context, untreated stainless steel, 150 around approximately. So in other words, this watch is going to eat scratches alive. For our next piece, we jump to Germany with the Mula Glasuta SAR Rescue Timer, specifically the Lumen. Now, Mula is a German manufacturer. They've been around since the 1800s, family operated. We're not making watches until the 1990s. Before that, they were known for developing marine chronometers, also different dashboard instruments. We're producing devices for BMW of all brands and developed a solid reputation for their engineering. But then in the 1990s, they shifted into wristwatches and one of the areas that they excelled in was for those in the aquatic environments. The SAR Rescue Timer came out of that specific pursuit. It was actually developed when Mula was in communication with the German Maritime Search and Rescue Association and proposed these watches to be worn on the wrists of those involved. In 2002, that ended up happening and the watches really are built for this intended use case and are robust as can be, but also create a distinct look from across the room if you ever were going to wear this on your wrist. It comes with a 42 millimeter diameter that still wears well on wrist. It has that hooded lug design, 48.8 millimeters on that lug to lug, thickness of 13.1 millimeters, and water resistance of a thousand meters with an SW200 on the inside, but is not doing this watch justice to call this an standard SW200. What Mula is doing is they have a proprietary regulating organ on these watches and also are doing some disassembly and reassembly of the movement itself before sending this out, fine tune and regulate it. This is not your run of the mill, putting a movement inside of a case, calling it a day. Mula is not that type of brand and you know this whole region of Glasuta is not that type of region to be doing something like that. A couple other cool things about this watch, with the name Lumen, you are getting a full loom dial. Also the magnifier for the crystal, it's actually seated inside the crystal. It's not going to have that bubble effect like on some Rolex models. That sapphire is also very thick. I believe it's around three millimeters thick. Rubber center link, rubber bezel, hooded lug design, and then that full loom dial, how they're able to go about this, which I think is very really cool, is those markers are basically covering up the Superluminova underneath. Basically the reverse effect that you might see with like a sandwich dial where it's cutting out the areas where the loom can shine. Here you're having basically the opposite, covering up that super luminova backdrop. For our next watch here, this is one that is not going to grab attention necessarily when you have the lights on, but when the lights are turning off, this one is going to shine, quite literally in fact. This is the Ball Marvelite Caring Edition. So. Ball is known for their use of tritium. What they've done here is they've taken the use of tritium and created a rainbow dial with the illuminating sources of light. Tritium is a constant illuminating material, does not need to be charged. So in a dim environment or a very dark environment, this is where you are going to see this pop out. You turn the lights off, this watch looks unlike anything you're ever going to see. Now, is it going to be for everybody or pretty much anything on this list is going to be for everybody. That's not really what the lane of this video is, but if, is it going to create conversation? You know, or if you, yeah, if you find yourself wanting to create conversation in a dark room, but I can see wearing this out like to like a club or like a party or something like that. And it's more kind of dim lit environment. People are going to be like, what is going on with the hat? Speaking of what is going on with that, and even further asking maybe even what time it is, the Meister Singer Lunascope. So this is a watch that I wanted to include on this list for two reasons. Number one, the photorealistic moon phase indication with the large aperture at the upper portion of the dial is one thing, but then further is how this watch tells the time. So Meister Singer is famous for using a single hand to indicate the time. So you're looking at this and probably asking, 
how do you read the time? And that would be the reaction of most people if you ever wore this watch out. You see one single hand, you're thinking, okay, it looks like a weight scale that I'd have in my bathroom, but it's pretty cool. So 12 hour scale is what you're looking at. So you have all the markings of each hour, and then inside each hour, you have individual hash marks that are going to indicate five minutes. For the 15 minute marks and also the half hour marks, you're going to have longer markings, so it's easier to distinguish what time you're looking at. Now, given that these are approximately times, certain people that are crazy about accuracy are not going to love this because you can't even reap the benefits of that given that this is showing only five minutes at a time. But unlike anything else you're going to see, I like the one hand approach. Is it a bit quirky out there? Absolutely. Is it something that with the moon phase is a cool combination? I think comes together in a way that's pretty cohesive and very romantic. I think it does. Next, we have a release from 2023, one that was talked about quite a bit and has continued to be talked about. This is the Aorus Pro Pilot X Kermit Edition. What I like about this watch, and I am not a big fan of the overly branded kind of cartoon watches that have now, it seems like flooded the market in the last few years. Not really for me. Hey, I'm just my opinion, but uh, I don't really see the appeal. But this one was done in a way that I think works. And it's because it's done in a more discreet manner and it's to be discovered rather than be just screaming from the hilltop trying to get, uh, gather attention. This is not what this watch is about. Uh, yes, the green dial is not what I would call subdued or under the radar, but it's not done to a point where it's an eyesore. I think it's actually a pretty cool shade of green. Legibility is a concern, but really an interesting looking dial. I like the color. So Kermit with his appearance is only coming once a month right at the beginning of every month. I like how that is more of just this small little nod to a kind of bigger idea. And the watch itself, I think is phenomenal. I love this case. I think people have glossed over how solid the case of the ProPilot X is. Titanium case, bracelet is phenomenal. The clasp and how it looks like a seatbelt is a fun little touch. 39 millimeters, wearable at 46.9 millimeter lug to lug and 100 meters of water resistance with the Caliber 400 on the inside with that five day power reserve. Another watch released in 2023 that got a lot of attention, some positive, some negative. This is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Celebration Edition. So this is the bubble version of the Oyster Perpetual as it's more informally known. So when I first saw this watch, I almost lumped it together with the day dates. And I don't think that was necessarily fair because I don't think this is as crazy as those emoji puzzle pieces from the day date collection. I also think the price and where it sits it is sure, I'm going to probably be something that's gonna be harder to get, but if you can't get it at retail prices, you have a very established collection as somebody that uh, maybe has a lot of luxury watches and you wanted to get a Rolex at that Oyster Perpetual kind of position, which is more the entry level position from the brand, I think it's easier to rationalize going in the direction of this versus something like those crazy day dates. And I also have found that this watch has grown on me a little bit more. Now, is it something I'm gonna be rushing to an AD to try to go get? No, but I do think it kind of combines the appeal of those pastel color oyster perpetuals, putting it into this abstract form that is still pretty you know, eye-catching and can be enjoyed with a little bit more of a less serious tone than the typical Rolex. I think at times Rolex can take themselves a little bit too seriously and that even extends into the owners. So to see something that is more playful, not so serious, it's lighthearted, that you can wear on your wrist, I think is well received. 31, 36, and 41 millimeter options available, also with some different movements that will be within this dependent on that size. Uh, but I, I like what this watch is actually going for. It's grown on me. I've kind of changed my tune on this one. For those puzzle pieces, not yet. It's gonna need some more convincing. For our next piece, this is one that is Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. You have one that is all about the business, the other one that is out there a bit more crazy. This is the JLC Reverso Tribute Chronograph. One of my favorite releases so far this year, I think it was the star of the show, one of the stars of the show from Watches and Wonders, love this model. Now it wears like a duo face and it really is a duo face, but it comes with a fully integrated chronograph movement on the inside, which I think adds to the appeal of this watch because it's pretty wearable despite being a duo face, has the underside chassis with that central case that can flip. You're dealing with a thickness of only 11.14 millimeters, which is pretty impressive. The manual JLC 860 caliber is available on the backside. One side, you have the conventional tribute dial. 
discreet as can be, stealthy as can be, not going to draw any attention, but then you flip it around, you see an exposed movement with the central dial, so it is still able to you know, do some time telling here. And in addition to that, showcasing that beautifully finished movement. Cote de Genève finish, column wheel on display, and a lot to get lost in, and it is a feast for the eyes on that reverse side. Next, a Belgian-based brand, the Resins Type 3BB. So I have a full review on this watch. I remember when I first saw resins and my reaction was, what is that? I, I had no idea what I was looking at. I've never seen anything like it. And still to this day, I've never really seen anything else that rivals the looks of these watches out there, eccentric, more looks like a electronic wearable device than it does an actual watch, but there's true watchmaking happening here and how this is developed. How this is constructed, you basically have a watch dial that is showcasing the time in more of a regulator type of fashion. It also has the day of the week indication with highlights around the weekend days to tell the difference between the days, which also in turn can serve as an AM PM indicator depending on what time of the little marker that it is pointing to. Also date, it is wound by the back of the watch, so it does not have a conventional crown. It also sets the time that way with that reverse side of the case and how it is displaying this vivid inky black dial, if we can call it a dial, is with the use of oil on the inside of that large dome crystal. This eliminates reflections at pretty much any angle, and it is beautiful to look at both of the lights on and then also with the lights off. I think one thing that surprised me when I handled this watch for the first time and had some time to you know actually review it was you get this in dim lighting and you see it just shine very brightly. Next up, we have the Ulysse Nardin Freak X. So the original Freak was unveiled in 2001 and it pioneered two different concepts in the industry. One was more of these daring executions when it comes to watch movements. You had a gear train and balance directly on the hands, which is nuts and freakish, but it also pioneered a material in the industry that has become a standard, and that is silicon. The Freak X is the smaller baby brother to the Freak. It's about half the price. And instead of having no crown and setting the time with a little flap on the watch and rotating the bezel, here you have a conventional crown. But everything about this watch, apart from that, is not conventional. You have the balance that is going to be seated on the reverse end of the minute hand that is going to oscillate and is going to spin along with the moving minute. So again, just crazy stuff. Also, the case is unconventional as well with its material. You're getting a central titanium case, but then on the outside, it's housed within a carbon fiber shell. This next watch demonstrates that elegance and grabbing attention are not themes that can butt heads. They can actually come together and actually work. This is the Vacheron Constantin Historique American 1921. This is a watch that if you've ever looked at it, you might be asking, okay, what is going on here? This was developed in 1919 and 1921. Vacheron created this for the evolving American automotive industry. It's known as a driver's watch, which basically is going to have an orientation. When you grab your hands at 10 and two on the wheel, you'll have the perfect orientation to take a look at your watch at a glance and read the time. When I put this watch on the wrist for the first time and I actually even just raised my wrist, not even going to 10 and two, I recognize that this orientation is very intuitive for the eye and it actually almost is easier in some ways. But then to everybody else in the room, you look around and they're gonna be looking at you saying like, oh, wow, what is going on with that watch? It has this surrealist type of approach. It reminds me of like a Salvador Dali type of clock that you'll see in some of his paintings. Or I've had people call this like the Alice in Wonderland watch. And I think it's a you know accurate description. It has this mystique around this piece, but still under the, all of that, it is elegant and timeless as can be. For our next piece, the Frank Muller Crazy Hours. And when you look at this watch for the first time, you might be thinking, what is going on here? I see all these hours, they're out of order. What even, ev what even is the time? What is going on here? So how this watch works is it has all of the hours along the outside, they're in scrambled order, but they're actually done in an order that makes sense once you identify the trick. So how this watch works is when you have the minute hand reach the next hour, the hour hand will jump to the hour that is the actual time. What you have here is a separation of several hours between each hour, it's I believe five different positions separating the current time, the current hour from the next hour. So what will happen is once the minute hand reaches the next hour, that hour hand will jump to the next hour. So whatever it's pointing at is the actual time. Don't get confused. 
Uh, it is out there, it is weird, it is eccentric. You have many different versions to go for. You have those rainbow numeral versions, ones that are more conventional in its approach. But a watch, no doubt, is probably one of the best at grabbing attention given the way that it is approaching its uh, way of telling time. Moving right along, we have the MBNF Legacy Machine Perpetual Evo. This is an engineering masterpiece in terms of what it is. So MBNF is a brand that was started by Max Booser. He formerly was at Harry Winston in their heyday. And I would say this is probably one of the best representations of an independent brand and in doing things right uh, for a variety of reasons. I think the ethos behind the brand is sound. It was founded in 2005. They don't refer to their watches even as watches. It's really about just creating these interesting pieces of like art and also giving a tip of the cap to the engineers, designers that are responsible for putting these together. That's why it's called Max Booster in Friends, MBNF. So this case comes in either zirconium or in titanium. It's very steampunk. It reminds me of like Bioshock Infinite and uh, combining classical elements with futuristic elements. Now there's a lot of things that will make this watch grab attention. You have the perpetual layout. You will have the dome crystal on these watches. But I think the star of the show though is the central balance wheel that is going to be held in place by these large oversized chrome bridges. And I don't even know if you can call them bridges. They're more like these arms extending out to the center of the dial to allow that balance wheel to oscillate center stage. And finally, we have the Jacob & Co Astronomia Sky. And the Astronomia Collection first unveiled in 2014. This was a watch when I first saw it, I had a reaction and I'm sure you did too. Jacob is a brand that is very much out there. It's not gonna be for everybody. And I think a lot of people just will say, oh, these are gaudy, these are not for me, which, you know, hey, I don't really resonate with a lot of the designs from Jacob & Co as well. But one thing you cannot dispute is these watches grab attention. They also are, in terms of their engineering, remarkable. The engineering of something like this is unlike almost anything you're going to see in watchmaking. And why I wanted to put it on this list is one, it has an ability to fascinate people that are not into watches. There is no other watch that has been sent to me more via text or any other communication like this watch by people that are not into watches. I remember when Conor McGregor, I believe, wore one of these watches. Everyone's just hitting me up saying, hey, have you ever seen this? They you know, know I like watches, and this was the one thing in their just general, just non-watch world that came on their plate, and they were so amazed by it that they were like, wow, have you ever seen this? This is the coolest watch I've ever seen. And I think that's special. If you can create conversation without even having the watch be in the room with you, that says something. So the watch here, just talking about what we're looking at, you have this four axis display concept with a triple axis tourbillon on one arm. Then you have an orbital second indication running seconds on another, a cut diamond with 288 facets, it's known as the Jacob cut, an AM PM indicator at the center, and then finally the analog display for the time. I was actually able to try a lot of their Astronomia watches on when I did a sit down with Jacob. And one thing that amazed me though was just how all of these watches still felt like watches on the wrist. I thought like, okay, it's a fishbowl on the wrist, but I was really surprised. You try it on, you're like, okay, this is actually pretty wearable. Yes, it's absurd, but it is still a watch. And in terms of grabbing attention, yes, there's a little bit of this ostentatious nature to these watches, but it is unmistakable that it is able to grab people's attention in a way that fascinates them. And I think that is something that should be applauded. Because if you have a watch that, even if for people that are not into watches, can just get their attention and be like, what is this? And have this childlike curiosity that comes with it. To me, that's cool. But all right, guys, that is my list here today, looking at 16 watches that can start a conversation. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. Also, of any watch in your collection, which one gets the most compliments and attention and why? I'd uh, love to see your comments down below. Also, definitely check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to make all these videos happen and we're able to fund all of the productions is through teddybaldestar.com. We don't charge the brands to be making content on this channel. So if you are in the market for a watch, we would absolutely love to have your business. It allows us to keep doing what we're doing and we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.